Anthony here from CompSize Studio and welcome back to your 45th Java programming tutorial. I'm um, so sorry guys I haven't made a video in a little while. Um, I was pretty busy over the weekend so I didn't get a chance to make any. Um, so yeah, over this week I'm going to be making quite a few videos just to make up for last week. And um, yeah, so uh, in this tutorial I'm just going to be teaching you guys, if you guys haven't noticed, the little title up at the top there says Try Catch Blocks. Um, and you guys are probably wondering what the heck that is. So let me just go and explain it. Uh, so basically when you're making a program, sometimes you're not going to be able to um, predict if an error is going to be thrown. And usually these errors uh, happen not because your program's bad, but because the user did something wrong um, causing your program to throw an error. So usually, as I said, it's not your fault, so you're going to have to use a try catch block to do this. Um, so in this program, we're just going to be making a program that um, basically takes a number in from the user and it's just going to divide it by like 10 or something or some type of number. Um, and we're going to surround it with a try catch block because what if the user inputted their name instead of a number or something dumb like that? Um, that would cause the program to crash. So in order to prevent it from crashing, we use a try catch block. So enough of me babbling, you guys probably all are all confused now. Now I have to clean it all up. So um, yeah, let's just get right into it. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make your scanner object. So quickly make that. <coughs> System.in. All right. And just add that import right there. And um, so yeah, next thing you're going to want to do, space down a little bit. And then you're going to want to make your first part of your try catch block. So the first keyword that you're going to need to know is the try keyword. So it's kind of in the name of the statement try catch. So I bet you guys can guess what the next keyword we're going to have to know is. Um, so after your try, you're going to want to put a curly brace and then an ending curly brace. Um, in between these curly braces here, these two right here, we're going to want to put the code that we think an error is going to be thrown at. So basically we're going to be taking in um, taking in a number from the user. So we're going to stick that in between our try curly braces. So let's just do a little prompt here. Print out please enter a number. And then we're going to just want to make an integer variable and set it equal to whatever the user inputted into that number. So let's go int user input uh, spell is equal to sc dot next int because we're taking in an integer variable integer variable we're going to use next int and now with a semicolon and then as you guys can see we still got a red underline here so we need to finish off our try catch block here oh oh my bad let's make the calculation first may as well make this program do something so let's just print out s out user input and what should we do? We'll just divide it by 10 or something like that. Do a simple little calculation. And uh, the next thing you're going to want to do right after this curly brace is put your catch statement. Now, your catch statement, basically, if an error is occurs within this try block here, if anything happens in here that the computer doesn't like, it's going to go to our catch block, and then it's going to execute that code, and then the program is going to end. So next keyword we got to know the catch and just type that c-a-t-c-h if you guys don't know how to spell that and then right after that we need to put circle brackets and then inside of here um, Java whenever it throws an error it goes into a built-in class in Java called exception now just type this out right now exception with a capital E remember that it's important and then you're gonna want to make an object of this class uh, we'll just call it E that's usually the kind of thing that everyone does in Java is call it E. And then you just need to end that off with two more curly braces. So I understand this is probably like the weirdest syntax you've ever seen, but um, I'll break it down right after this. So basically whatever goes in between these curly braces is going to be outputted once an error occurs inside of this try, try catch, inside this try block, sorry, inside these two curly braces. So let's just print something out. We'll just go S out error so basically that's what's going to happen if um, they input something invalid 
So let's just run this right now. Show you guys what's going on here. All right, and you guys probably can't see that. No, you cannot. Let's move this up. Come on, Anthony. You can do it. There we go. Please enter a number. Um, so let's enter 10. 10 divided by 10 is one. As you can see, the program ran successfully. Um, let's rerun this and say I do not understand English. So I type in Anthony. Ah, there's my name. Whoop, error. So if the program didn't have this try catch block right here, this program would have ran and it would have just crashed. It would, you would have gotten a whole bunch of errors. It would have been like um, build error. It wouldn't say build successful. And uh, yeah, so basically in between this try block here, we put the code that we want to um, try out, the code that we think might throw an error. In between this catch block, we want to put the error that happens when an error occurs within this try catch block. Um, I'll get to this exception E in the next tutorial, and I'll kind of explain that in the next one. So if you guys didn't fully understand this, don't worry about it. I'll re-explain everything in the next tutorial. So please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, go check out my website, www.compsystudio.com. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.